2022 World Cup is anything but straightforward. Marred in accusations of bribery and human rights abuses, it has also been praised for being the first to be staged in the Middle East. In order to understand the issues that have shaped this event, we're traveling through 17 countries in 17 days, speaking to people on the road from London to Doha. Welcome to our journey to a postmodern World Cup. Okay, we're here in uh, Trieste. We're sitting on the edge of the piazza there. We've got our Americano. Remind you of anything? We've got a copy of the Gazzetta della Sport here. Um, this is Saturday, the 12th of November. It's a week before the World Cup starts. And just kind of leafing through it, we've got a story about Roma there. There's one about Lazio. Page number uh, 17, I think it is. No, page number 18, in fact. Well, there's any reference to the World Cup, the global football tournament that's happening in uh, just one week's time. Uh, obviously partly a consequence of Italy not being in the World Cup, but also possibly a consequence of people not really caring about it this time. We're six days out from the World Cup opening ceremony in Doha. The boys are exhausted and we're on the way to Ljubljana. Very tired. Very tired. Low energy at the moment. Laurie had a little nap. Uh, I tried to have a little nap. Couldn't. It wasn't happening. Is this a little bit of a situation where, although it's nice that there's going to be people waiting for us, you're way too tired to interact with them? Yeah. I've tracked down some local journalists who have a radio show in town to show us around the city. Hi, my name is Jean. Go. Uh, <laughs> Anton. Yaka. Amade. Avanti, ragazzi. Where are we headed? Mika. Uh, we're headed. Uh, do you have any plans or? <laughs> Slovenia has been absent from the World Cup since 2010, but the former national stadium is a gem. So, Mika and his friends took us to check it out. It's time like this that remind you how lucky we are to do what we love. What was supposed to be a stressful couple hours in Slovenia turned into one of the nicest moments of the trip. This is how old this. It's so old that you can find an edible mushroom here. Yes. <laughs> I don't know where, but probably this one. Uh, but yeah. The World Cup in 1934 was given to Mussolini's fascist Italy. Yeah. It was basically just a propaganda tool for Mussolini. Yeah. Then if you look look at the Argentina in 1978, yeah. it was the same. It was a, a, a despicable regime it was murdering people uh, while the games were going on. And you know, then they were they they also gave it to Russia recently, and now this. So I, I'm not too hopeful really because this world. It's just, you know, this is the world we live in. Yeah. <laughs> it has a long history of being awarded to, uh, let's say, unsavory regimes. Mm -hmm. The stadium was built by legendary architect Josip Plechnik, who's credited with giving the city its modern identity, and who also famously built the three bridges. What is going on today? Why is everyone serving wine? Because it's uh, St. Martin's Day. It was yesterday, and on that day, the grape juice becomes wine. My day. Grave juice to wine. <laughs> Back on the train and off to Zagreb in Croatia. We're here to meet Igor Bishken, Croatia's U21 coach. 
I mean, you have many, many uh, video clips of, of the of the reception the players and the team got when they get back from uh, Russia. I've seen some clips uh, from France when they were celebrating the victory. That's not even to compare. <laughs> really? <laughs> no, you have some board, you have. Really? But why was that then? Do you think why? why? Because it's it's a, it's a special thing, a national team. It's a special thing for Croatians, and the people don't have too 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 many ta- too many uh, reasons to 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 be together. Right. And we had a war, and that's of course it's always you know thing that uh, brings people together. And uh, one of the most emotional things that I've ever seen you know happening in my country this celebration when they came back from from Russia. Do you think it's difficult then when? We're sort of told not to mix politics and football because it kind of it feels like it's all, always been there. Yeah, I mean, politics are everywhere. It's impossible to divide those things and to keep them apart. But, you know, when you have results, they everybody wants to to take a piece of it or, or to 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 be a part of it. We need politics in some ways as well. Football. In this country, maybe more than in some richer, richer countries. So, but uh, I don't know what to say. Really, I, I I don't like politics, but it's everywhere. You cannot escape it. You cannot uh, distance completely from it. Hi. Hi. Yeah. Uh, we. We're in Zagreb, that sound of the tram going past. Then, Boban's restaurant for lunch, the AC Milan legend, famously started a war by kicking a cop. It's on Boban's plate. Prosciutto crudo, salami, prosciutto cotto. Wait a sec, I'm reading the wrong thing there. Well done, restaurant food review. Good, I had the steak. Tender as his midfield play. <sighs> Going to... Tutto completo, Europa. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All the way to Doha. All the way to Doha. Doha. Oh. oh that's it's a long journey. We're going to the uh, the Dinran Zagreb Stadium. It's a fun uh, excursion as, as a reward for me because I finished. The articles that I was supposed to finish, Lorry, I've got some writing to do, so he's he's got to stay behind and do that. And uh, once he's finished, his meringue cake as well. Uh, so we're going on a fun little excursion while he has to do some work. Croatia, the country who played its first unofficial match against the USA while Yugoslavia was still trying to qualify for Euro 1992, have become a staple of the World Cup. Despite the success though, we're more than halfway to Qatar and have yet to see any World Cup iconography. I thought we would have done by now. We did see some nuns though. Bus to Belgrade. Where are we right now? We're almost to Serbia, on the border. Go on. We've just stopped. Not as much of a queue as the road is going to be. And this is country number. 
Welcome to Belgrade. And yes, that graffiti did say Kosovo is Serbia. But let's keep politics out of football, guys. So, Lori, what happened over the last six hours of the bus? Uh, yeah, so uh, Bruno Fernandes has gone out against the World Cup in quite a factual way, simple. He just says that there's been deaths on building the stadiums and they're not happy about it. Uh, and that should be raised at this moment. Also, Cristiano Ronaldo has given an interview to Piers Morgan. He's done an interview with him before, you know, in regular contact. Uh, airing his grievances with the club, quite explosive, saying mainly that he's got no respect for Ten Hag and United are forcing him out. He feels betrayed. We're off to bed and tomorrow we check out the city. Just what you want at midnight. That's exactly what the doctor ordered right there. Hill. Just in our hotel in Belgrade. Long day. Struggling a bit today. It's reached the point of the trip where no matter how much sleep you have, you don't really, it doesn't really do a huge amount of good. Just completely drained for most of the time. All right, Nick, where are we going? What's going on? Okay. Why are we in a car also? Uh, okay, we're in Belgrade. Uh, we are going to go around uh, the city. We're going to go to the Maracanã Stadium, see what uh, we can see there. Maybe speak to some people, eat some local dishes. Uh, it's weird being during winter and stuff like that and all the stories about discrimination and what they do to the workers and stuff like that. I don't really think it's great, but the World Cup is the World Cup and it's a great thing. And then we're going to drive to Sofia later and kind of hopefully figure out what we're doing at the end of this trip. What do you have to say for your super tactical driving? Just fantastic. This is John, by the way. He's been here the whole time. When he's not with us, he covers conflict zones. Let's just say he drinks Red Bull to go to sleep. And that's me. After a few in Sofia, at the end of day, I don't know what, with Laurie. Nick has very sensibly gone to bed. I'm not ready to go. I think we should go back in. <laughs> back in? Because I'm not leaving. Oh, don't tell me. Uh, oh, don't tell me to take you to the club. I'm not leaving. I'm not leaving. I'm not leaving. <laughs> I'll, tell you what, I'll tell you this much. I'll tell you this much. T4IRL audience. I'm not leaving. I'm not fucking leaving. If you liked today's video, please consider subscribing to the channel.